Just a thought for the week, which comes, this peace of the Lord be with you. That's a really good verse. I didn't start off with a verse, I just started off with an idea, just to, just to share with you, which you think, oh, I've been doing this job for 35 years, I should have got this by now, but there was a good thought this week. And I share this with you for next week. When I was, uh, when I was a young man, I... Well, when I was, I was a, sort of about 12 or 13, um, and I became a Christian, I remember it was indelibly marked in my thought that to be a Christian was a great thing to be, but it was going to be hard work. You know? On a Sunday afternoon, you know, remember Sundays when you went to church in the morning? And you went to church in the afternoon. And you went to church in the evening. And you went back to school for a rest. Um, on a Sunday afternoon, I went to Crusader class with Myers, so he lived nearer than I did. And I used to cycle virtually across Bristol on this old bike. And it was all, the wind was always in my face, and it was going to be raining. Um, so I got wet on the way over there, and I got wet on the way back. When I got back to tea, I was in bits. <laughs> but I used to think then, yeah, but if I didn't believe in Jesus, if I wasn't a follower of Jesus, I'd have just been doing stuff at home. Those people just at home. To be a follower of Jesus, take up your cross and follow him, it's going to be tough. And I felt, oh, that's right. The harder the better in a way. And with all this armor Christian soldiers business and putting on the armor of God and armor is heavy and all this sort of thing. And all these heroes of old, whether they're heroes in the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, all those heroes who write heroes, they write books about since. It's all great stuff, but it is all challenging. It's all hard, isn't it? And there's a truth in that. It's no, no cheap grace, as Bonhoeffer said. But I just think that I've overrated how easygoing sin is and how difficult being good is. I think sin is greatly oversold. It's been a great PR triumph, hasn't it? Really. If you live spiritually on a sofa, you just get backache. And when it gets to it, when it gets to not following Jesus... I used to think that's the natural thing to do because all the other kids in my class didn't follow Jesus. I thought I had to just do and travel a lot of furrow which was good but difficult. But you know, it's not that good on the sofa. Sin is it's a bit like, um, I was looking at some of those people in the Bible for whom sin is... Uh, yeah, I was looking at a couple of Psalms here. Psalm 2. I can remember that. It's right near the beginning. Psalm 2, where it's talking about why do the why do the nations plan rebellion? Why do people make their useless plots? The kings revolt, their rulers plot together against the Lord, against the king he chose. That's sort of in a right tiz, aren't they? They're all together there banging their shields and all the horses and all this sort of thing, you know. Why are they doing it? Because the Lord is going to put them out of their misery soon. That sense of, oh, sin is such hard work, isn't it? All those people building the Tower of Babel, all those, oh, can you imagine it? All that vertigo up that tower and all that sort of industrial relations crisis and then it doesn't get finished and all those resources gone to waste. You think, this sin, this, hey, we can do what we want. Hey, we'll have a good time. It's just not very good, is it? It takes such a lot of effort. Dear old Martha, it's not a very bad sin, but she's just not listening to Jesus. Can you imagine all that in the kitchen with the pans and the pots and dropping things and burning things? And oh, Is that, hey, doing your own thing? It's not so good. And it eats you up. It's a bit like, I mean, you find it with you, you know, trying to just do this stuff. Hey, I'm just doing my own thing. It's like pushing a door with a mat behind it. You know, you can push the door, but as you push it through, on the mat rucks up, doesn't it? 
and it gets more and more difficult. And you're doing the wrong thing, you've got the wrong relationship, the wrong attitude, and you're just pushing on with it, and it just eats you up. It just eats you up. Who wants to do that? Look at, um, look at David and Bathsheba. I was looking at this in, in, a, in, a, in a context, really. I mean, all the effort he finishes up, having had one afternoon sort of being the king and being the big boy sort of thing, the rest of his life screwed up, isn't it? He's, he's all that energy at managing the problem and her husband and her dead husband and, her, you know, and his, his next son and all that. He's, don't we find, that some of you have experienced this in big things, I've experienced it in small things, that the results of sin soak up your energy. I used to think being a Christian was going to be exhausting and not being a Christian was easy going. It's exhausting being bad. I tried it often. <laughs> but I think we need to say this. It's very tiring. How many people with dysfunctional relationships, broken um, relationships, spent much of the energy of their entire lives making do rather than going on holiday that's extraordinary but on the other hand there is a real sense in which doing the right thing this is what this is I just thought, somebody's mentioned this to me on Tuesday doing the right thing is not difficult doing the right thing is actually a blessing serving the Lord is okay it really is. There's so many people in the Bible, we say they're challenged and they're difficult. <clears throat> this week, you're going to try and serve the Lord and keep his way. You know, It might not be easy, but you don't want to feel over heroic about it because it's actually the natural thing to do. If you've ever tried to forgive somebody and forgive them, you thought, gosh, I should have done that years ago. <laughs> it is a natural thing to do. It's not, I'm going to grit my teeth and do something totally superhuman. I'm going to forgive them as if it's impossible. Those things. I mean, after we talked about Martha, what about Mary? Mary does the good thing. She also does the thing without the washing up and the dropping things and burning things and all that. She just sits down. How good is that? It's really good just to listen to Jesus. Whenever did we hear St. Paul say, even when almost being drowned in a shipwreck, or almost being done over by some crowd, or almost being lynched by a mob, when does he ever say, oh, I never had this trouble when I was a Pharisee? He didn't say that. He didn't say that. There's a naturalness, a goodness, a rightness. You know, Matthew doesn't say, oh, I remember when I was a tax collector. It's good. He didn't say that. There is a real challenge to being a Christian, but there is a naturalness and a rightness about it. And I'll just leave you with a separate psalm. Psalm 19. Now Psalm 19, the second half of it, has got some of the bits that you, you expect. The commands of the Lord are trustworthy, giving wisdom to those who lack it. Oh, that's good, isn't it? All right. The reverence for the Lord is good. It will continue forever. The judgments of the Lord are just. They are always fair. But amidst them, there's verses like this. The law of the Lord is perfect. It gives new strength. And for those of you who are exhausted already and think being a Christian will just be more effort. It's, it, what a thought that you would be stronger through doing it rather than tireder through doing it. Just like those verses from Isaiah. Old Elijah, when he's serving the Lord, Ahab gets in his chariot and rushes off to, a, to another city. And we read that Elijah pulls up his coat and runs in front of the chariot the whole way. But when he's given up and he's not trusting God anymore, God needs 24 hours under a bush to revive him. He's doing the right thing. He's got all the energy he needs. He's lost it. He's knackered. Oh, he's tired. <laughs> you know? That's a strong It gives fresh energy. It says that. It says at the end of the psalm, it says, um, 
wherever it does it say here, it says um, that, that the Lord of the born in Zion will the fine go sweet and reward. Verse 11, I am rewarded for obeying them. I was brought up to feel that you weren't supposed to have any rewards in Christianity. What's that prayer that ends up to not to ask for any reward except for doing right? Anyway, that's not in the Bible. The Bible's full of rewards. Can you imagine those with the feeding of the 5,000? Oh, we thought we were going to go out for a quiet picnic and we got 5,000 people to feed. But as you leave, what happens at the end? They all get a huge big feast of bread and fish when before he hadn't got anything at all. That's quite real. The real rewards us. You give some time you haven't got, you find that he produces more time. You are generous, he seems to produce some more resources for you. You forgive somebody and you get forgiven for something else. We are rewarded. Hey, that's good to be good because you're rewarded. But finally, outrageously, it says... Which I never thought this at all when I was a young man. The laws of the Lord are right, and those who obey them are happy. <laughs> happy. I thought it was just supposed to be righteous. Blessed. Happy, it says. Happy. It means happy. Not in a tensely sort of way, but genuinely, deeply happy. People didn't tell me that. Yeah, they thought it was good, but not happy. just finished with the Beatitudes then. If you're talking about the Beatitudes, we spend all our time looking down one side of the column, thinking how we can avoid doing them, or spiritualise them, or water them down. I'm thinking about mourning, I'm thinking about spiritually being spiritually poor, I'm thinking being humble, dear. being merciful to difficult people, pure in heart, you work all the way down, was, this is what the disciples should do, and I miss that it says, all the way down, blessed are those who do it. Or as it says in the Good News Bible, not trivially, happily are those. What if I start on that side and say, do you want to be happy? Be like this. Rather than saying, be like this and you might be blessed, in a sort of Victorian way, when blessed means miserable. Do you want to be happy? Hmm. Well, be like this then. To be happy, to be rewarded, for it to be natural. I just yeah, I just thought on Tuesday, I thought, gosh, it's a real naturalness to be good. And it's good to be good. It's challenging to be good, but this week, you want to be happy, be good. Because that's what we are made to be. We are restored to the people we are, not to be Superman, but to be natural. We are subnormal in sin. It's challenging to be a Christian, but it's very good. And it's not as difficult as the devil makes out. And sin is seriously oversold and very disappointing. I've tried a great deal of it. And I'll tell you. That's just a thought. So I think when we're waiting here and we want to be, you might have been saying, Lord, help me this coming week. We need a bit of strength, we need a bit of guidance. But if you think, Lord, I want to be holy, I want to do your will, that's all good. But don't think, and so I need to be superhumanly spiritual this week. No, I just want to be normal. I just want to be normal. I want to do the Lord's work, I want to be holy, and I want to have a good time. Blessed are they, happy are they, happy are they. They are rewarded, they are strengthened, and they are happy.